Sinus. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first conversations of the series Women in the Wikimedia Movement. Um, we are here today to talk about women in Wikimedia programs. And uh, here with me in the room is Alex Wan, who is a program officer in the Community Engagement Department. My name is Maria Cruz. I'm Communications and Outreach Manager uh, in the Community Engagement Department as well at the Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, here with us today to present their work are Luisina Ferrante, who is a Education Program Coordinator of Wikimedia Argentina, Monica Single Jones and Mary Lee Prophet, who are going to talk about the Wikipedia in Residence program at the OCLC. And so, uh, without any further ado, uh, I will give the room to Luisina. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much for the invitation. I will share my screen, please. Tell me if you can see it well. It's good? Yes, we can see you. <laughs> Perfect. Well, as Maria said, um, my name is Luisina. I'm the Education Manager of Wikimedia Argentina. Um, I started working in Wikimedia Argentina two years ago. Uh, I am also a history teacher in high schools and universities here in Argentina. And I would like to share with you some details about our education program and also who participates in our education programs. Uh, we have more women participating there, more teacher women, and to share with you all our experience, I think that it's important to to share a, a little bit about our Argentine history related with women in education. Uh, first of all, I will talk about a little bit of that, and then I will share some numbers and uh, information about our different education projects in Wikimedia Argentina, and also something that is really important that is how we work with the gender gap that we found not only in Wikipedia but also in our society. Well, historically there were more women teachers than men and in education field and that difference is maintained to these days. If, we, if someone makes a mapping of teaching in Argentina, mainly in primary and high schools, what they find is a great difference with, between male and female teachers. In Argentina, in the late 19th century, women could start studying teaching with the creation and expansion of what we call here the normal school, escuelas normales. These schools were an orientation of high schools that allowed women that study there to become a teacher and teach in primary schools. Historically, that study uh, they are to become a teacher and teach in primary schools, but historical, historically this was justified because they become teacher and teach there because they have like a natural maternal attitude of childcare that in a way allowed them to be teachers. That was the way that in some historiography and also studies you can read that teachers are allowed to do it because women teachers are allowed to do it because they were women and yet they can care children. Feminist historiography has worked hard on this point and different researchers maintain that although their participation as workers was based on the idea that compared maternal attitude with good teaching, this allowed many middle class women to have access to tertiary studies and to work and to the work culture. We say it to the public space because before they can study in these normal schools, all of them were in their house, in a private space. And going to these normal schools and trying to work in being teachers allowed them not only to, to make something for themselves to, with others, also they have the possibility of associating with other education workers. 
So, in a way, this history in Argentina about women and the role of women in education in the 19th century explain why, to, even though today we find more women teachers in primary and high schools than men. Yes. So, I want to give this like a little bit of overview about our history and our about women in education because to understand how many women teachers we have in the education program in Wikimedia Argentina, we have to know a little bit what happened preview in our history to, to know the role of women in education. Here we have some examples of teachers that are really uh, important for us, uh, not only because they were teachers, they also uh, were activists for women rights during the, the late 19th century and the early 20th century. I have three examples, there are a lot of, a lot of them. Olga Cosettini, Alicia Moro de Justo, Julieta Lanteri. Um, these three women uh, study in these normal schools, were the first women that study in these normal schools. And in a way, it's, it's important to, to make a focus in that in Argentine history, the first women that have some kind of social recognition were the ones that were linked to education activities. Uh, and this is really important because it's the way that women have to be in this public space, a space that was think for men only. So, in the Wikimedia Argentina project, we have um, different proposals, pedagogical proposals for teachers. Uh, we generally have a um, main audience in, in, in Walmart education programs are teachers. We work w with the students, but we first work with teachers. We train them and then we help them to work with their subjects something related to Wikimedia projects, and specifically we work more with, with Wikipedia. And we develop different activities for different educative levels. Secondary school, mostly, university, and non-formal education. And gender gap goes through all our programs. Not only education, also community support, and also culture. So, as you can see here, it's our main four projects. They are projects that we work in virtual courses and also on site trainings. Editing clubs, um, we re organize with teachers and with students. We help them to, we train them to use Wikipedia in their classrooms and we help them to choose which topic they want to edit in Wikipedia and teachers try to work in the classroom with Wikipedia and also with, for example, Wikimedia Commons. As you can see, uh, in two years, we organized four editing clubs all around the country in different provinces. And we have more women participating than men. This represents that there are more women in secondary school, more, more teacher women in secondary school than men. And also the content that they want to work in Wikipedia always is related to improving the information, for example, related to women in local history or movement, women movement in local history, etc. We also have a um, Wiki Bridges Mock that is a virtual course that it's the only project uh, that we developed that help us to reach all the country the 24 provinces that we have in Argentina. And as you can see also, we have a lot of women uh, making that uh, virtual course than men. And in this, specifically in this project, the ones that participate in the activity decide which content they want to work with in Wikipedia. They decide um, if they can edit something of their personal like interest or if they want to edit something that then they are going to use it in the school. So here we have a lot of editions, but it depends on the teacher if they wanted to use it in school or if they use it for themselves. On the other hand, we have a project that is called Wiki Human Rights, 
that it's a project that we have been developing two years ago. Um, in this project specifically, we have uh, we have been working with uh, journalists and researchers. The the ones that coordinate this project are women also, and we edit about human rights in Argentina, but also in the region. In the case of Argentina, we improve a lot of information related with the last military dictatorship and also a lot of information related to women that were detained and disappeared during the military dictatorship. And the idea is this year work with the region, uh, improving information related with human rights in Latin America. Next week, we are going to Mexico, and we are going to make an edit that don't relate it with these topics. And the last project that we have is Wikipedia in the university, that if we think a little bit the university world in, in Argentina, it's more equal the, the women's and men's giving teaching there. We have an, an equal... <laughs> How, how I can say it. You have the same, the same in a in a subject in a in a subject. Yes, you have men and you also you have women. You didn't see there the difference that you see in a high school, for example, or in a primary school. But even though in, in they have the same participation, we can see that in our education program. There were, there were more women that lead these projects organized by, their, by, by her, by women, and less men that, only one man that lead the project related to university and Wikipedia. And also the participants are more women than men. So in all our projects, what we can see is that we have more women leading those, those activities and also doing it. And that is something that is all the time the same. Since I started working in Wikimedia Argentina, I all the time find this great difference or this great gap in participation related with women and related with men, but there are more women doing and proposing and creating activities. Here you can, I make like a rainbow of different topics that we edit in Wikipedia with these teachers. Uh, we, when we create an activity or we design an activity and we propose this activity in schools or in universities, we didn't say what they have to edit. We only explain how to do it or explain how to, they can work with Wikimedia in, in the education in general, and they choose which topic they want to improve in the frame of their activities. And you have a lot of topics. These are the ones that we edit more or teachers like to edit more, like, for example, human topic, human rights topics, universal history, gender gap, local history. Local history is something that they are all the time editing. And also local history, it's related to give names to, for example, women that didn't have an article or didn't have something in Wikipedia about what they have been doing in, in, in her life, but that is relevant uh, in the encyclopedia, but they didn't have the way of uh, learning how to do it. So we teach them how to do it, and they do it in the frame of, of, of the institution and a specific programs that they develop to do it, to, to expand that information. So I think that, in a way, it's really important to to think gender gap in the education programs because we have the opportunity to work with teachers, with students in their, in their classrooms, to, with schools, and the opportunity of giving some, some tools to learn how to edit an, an encyclopedia that everyone consults in the world. So our proposal in our different projects in Wikimedia Argentina is to work not only with students, but also with teachers, and also with women teachers, that in Argentina we have a lot of women teachers, to understand how they can do it, to help them to do it also, and to give, in a way, some track to the activities that they want to 
organized so they feel secure at the moment of uh, organizing themselves some activities related to improving information in Wikipedia. Related with, for example, uh, general information or, for example, related with gender gap. So um, these are some of our activities, uh, what we develop. I don't know if you have questions, then I suppose that we are going to, to share some of them. Uh, I think that it's important to, to um, thank Maria for the invitation and also to meet us and to know what we are doing in different uh, parts of the world, not only in Wikimedia Movement or through Wikimedia Movement, but also as women making history and telling our history in different parts of, of, of the world. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Lucina, um, for presenting about the work you're doing in Wikimedia Argentina. Um, we are compiling questions and we're going to have a time for conversation at the end. Uh, so I think um, I, I also wanted to say I forgot to introduce uh, my co-host for this event, Nicole Saad, uh, <laughs> who is in the room today uh, and will be asking questions at the end uh, with me as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, thank you so much, Lucina, again. And uh, we are going to move to um, Mary Lee and Monica. Are you guys ready? OK, this is Monica speaking. And I will do a screen share now to, uh, for Mary Lee and my presentation. And I will be driving the slides, and Mary Lee will be presenting first. Yeah, so. so yeah, thanks, thanks, Monica. While you're getting this up and running, um, I'm Merrily, and I'll introduce myself and Monica in just a minute. But the real star of our project, uh, the real star here is our project, which is aimed at strengthening ties between Wikipedia and libraries by ra raising awareness, running online trainings, and supporting library staff engagement. Um, our project uh, is funded by a grant from the Knight Foundation, which funds the core of the project. Uh, we were also awarded a supplementary grant from the Wikimedia Foundation to help bring support for our wonderful Wikipedia in residence. That's Monica. Um, it's really important to note that this project isn't explicitly about women. Uh, however, the project focused on training a professional group that is primarily made up of white women in the United States. So reflections about what's helpful to these women are not necessarily generalizable to what might be helpful to all women. Rather, our focus was on meeting the needs of a particular professional group. Um, so as I said, I'm Merrily, and I've been editing Wikipedia since 2005. And I was first really very strongly drawn to Wikipedia because I saw a potential for harnessing its power to help advance the cause of libraries. But the further I went on my journey as a Wikipedian, the more I realized that the power was not really in the platform. It was in the... Um, community behind it, and that's, that's really all of you who, uh, who power that. But I want to underscore that from my outsider perspective as a librarian, this was not at all obvious. So part of our project has been to bring, uh, to really foreground um, that, that community of Wikipedians. So before joining uh, as our Wikipedian in residence, Monica had previous experience with Wikipedia outreach, including running a gap finding project in collaboration with WikiEd Foundation and hosting a critical feminist edit-a-thon, as well as working with the University of Washington Libraries to run weekly training sessions with undergraduates. Um, and in addition to those awesome Wikipedia credentials, Monica is just an incredibly thoughtful and curious person, and her passion for learning and sharing learning has been really an advantage to our project. Um, so for this project, Monica was very much embedded in the larger Web Junction team. Um, since 2003, Web Junction has been the learning place for libraries and has served as a virtual gathering place where library staff build skills and find support. Web Junction delivers online professional training to public staff, uh, public library staff, to help in enhance their professional capacities. And here you see um, our, our, our full team uh, with Monica and I as, uh, as Wikipedians embedded within it. So this is a, our great group. Um, so the timeline for our project, which is just on this next slide, uh, 
First of all, we wanted to uh, simultaneously build awareness for the course, um, to recruit people for the course, but also to identify needs and take time to really build a thoughtful and responsive curriculum. So you'll note here, this, this took much longer than uh, delivering the course, which was an, a nine-week online training program. Um, we're now in that uh, final evaluation phase and also preparing to publish our course materials, which will be online before the conclusion of the project in May. Um, so our approach, Learning the Web Junction Way, is based on years of meeting the needs of adult learners, specifically US public library staff people who are already in the workplace and who are seeking to sharpen or develop their skills really have limited time and they need for those new skills to fit within their current work or their current workplace so we really put the why before the how in this in building and constructing this class um, so we looked uh, really at identifying the needs of public library staff and didn't start by presuming uh, we knew what would be the most meaningful approaches to training library staff. So instead we did surveys and interviews and here's what we found on the next slide. Um, first and foremost, information literacy is really, really critical to public library staff as well as improving access to authoritative, authoritative information and these were kind of primary drivers uh, for course participants as well as to support research and critical thinking skills. Um, librarians are also, of course, interested in raising the visibility of libraries in the communities that they're situated within. Um, and uh, libraries do a lot of public programming, so looking at Wikipedia is an opportunity to enrich their, their public programming. Uh, of note, 70% of the participants were had never edited Wikipedia, but were really um, curious uh, about, about the possibilities. So as we did the research and interviews with librarians that were already engaging with Wikipedia, we sought to raise awareness by elevating the voices of those that we had interviewed. So we really situated um, librarians who were, who were already working in Wikipedia first and foremost. Um, we invited library staff to show up, uh, to sign up for our program and then showed them the benefits that the training would bring to their professional lives. Uh, we were very careful in our messaging to feature the voices and stories of public library staff in their own words. We published a series of interviews on the Web Junction website. You can find that under Librarian to Wikipedia, and made presentations at um, library conferences, did a preview webinar um, with uh, library staff involved, and really tried to foreground the voices of, of those librarians. Um, by and using those interviews and findings from the survey to inform what we would cover in our training program informed by what matters to librarians, not what matters to um, Wikipedians who, who care about libraries, but, but what librarians actually care about. So during the course, we really tried to make our participants comfortable. We did all the communicating and course instruction using Web Junction's existing online professional development and educational platform. We aim to create human-to-human -human connections between um, our new library, Wikipedia, and existing Wikipedians. So we invited 15 Wikipedia plus library guides, many of whom were cultural heritage professionals already, to participate in the program as, um, as our guides. They introduced themselves, answered technical questions, shared feedback and ideas, and made friendly connections with our participants. Um, during the online training program, we had six online 90-minute webinar sessions. Each featured a practitioner who was able to speak about their experience with the topic in, in, the, you know, in the library. Um, some, but not all of our presenters also participated as guides, so kind of further cementing that relationship between um, existing Wikipedians. The guest presenters were really a high point for everyone who participated in our course. And again, it adds that human connection and exposes Wikipedia as a community and not as a technical platform. Um, so in our curriculum, we did not shy away from Wikipedia's weaknesses. We identified these as areas of opportunity, rather, for library staff um, featuring projects and programs that have taken place at libraries and that aim to redress Wikipedia's biases, including Afrocrowd, queer Wikipedia editing, feminist and women's history uh, edit-a-thon. So this wasn't um, the focus of our course, but we made sure to foreground uh, these, these efforts. Um, 
So following each of our six online classes, students would take Wikimedia Foundation tutorials and do assigned activities on Wikipedia, then return to write and reflect with their community of peers and the guides in a private course space. Because information literacy is really a cornerstone uh, to librarians, we really use this as a hook to, dry li to draw librarians into the programs. So some example of activities were to observe and report on the tea house, to evaluate a selection of articles, um, to help them see recentism, understand and evaluate concepts of notability, identify missing voices, write a conflict of interest statement on their user page, identify a page to edit and add citations, work in a sandbox, activate a red link on a talk page, and send wiki love messages. That's just a, a sample of things that we asked them to do. Um, our students also developed a plan of action. And we suggested five pathways, but we did not specify outcomes for them to take in their journey with Wikipedia. We did not want to assume that we knew what they wanted to get out of Wikipedia, but instead put tools and resources into their hands so that they could make the best decisions for themselves and the communities that they serve. Since the course has finished, we continue to support them with online office hours, um, uh, contacts for guides. Um, we did not, uh, we, we did not, the one thing that we really steered them away from was creating any new articles. We wanted them to get, um, build, build confidence and, um, yeah, and just really, really be strong in those basics. So through our program, we sought continually to affirm library staff and the alignment of their professional values with the mission and visibility of Wikipedia. We want them to be able to connect the dots between Wikipedia and library work by seeing themselves in Wikipedia and to feel valued and motivated to participate. We were extremely positive while not straying away from hard topics. So I'm gonna turn things over to Monica to talk about um, our, our participants and, uh, and some of the library stories, continue to elevate those library voices. Thank you so much, Marilee. Yes, it was a really exciting and wonderful lead up to the course and to the course. And right now we are watching and learning from what participants are doing with the tools and resources that we aimed to put in their hands so that they could figure out where they wanna go on their terms. And first of all, I just would like to say that they really rocked in terms of the editing that they did do. So by the numbers, we did have um, about 299 library staff enrolled in the course, and 236 of those participants became active editors. And I will say they were from 47 uh, states in the United States as well as seven countries. They total made over uh, 5,900 edits, and this is as of February 13th, so these numbers do keep going up. They uploaded to Commons some of them figuring out how to do this on their own because this wasn't something that we foregrounded in the course, but we showed them where to go to find out how to learn how to do things that we didn't explicitly um, assign them to do. And all told, they improved almost 800 articles, and a couple were bold and created new articles. And since the start of the course, there have been a lot of views to the improved articles. And the library staff were really proud of their accomplishments and communicated a lot together about what this meant for how they understood Wikipedia and the benefits of Wikipedia for themselves and for their libraries and communities. And I just want to share with you a couple of the profiles of the directions that library staff went. And I'll do so by telling the personal stories of a couple of our course participants. This is Jean King. She's a reference librarian at West Hempstead Public Library and she really took to editing during the course and found herself editing on topics that were relevant to her community. So gardens, um, monuments, and historical places in her community, she would find references that are available in her library, make photocopies of them, take notes, and then add citations during lulls at the reference desk. As she says, I like that I can add sources that are credible and I am able to find information using my databases that others don't have immediate access to. For her, editing is a way to reach out to people who are searching on the internet 
People often start their research on their own personal devices or home computers. They're not coming to the reference desk. But for Jean, she says, editing Wikipedia is helpful because I can bring bits and pieces together at the library, edit, and share that out. We also had many library staff, as Marilee mentioned, who do information literacy work with their patrons and communities. And here I'd like to share out the story of Denise Davis and Tom Boucher from Mor the Morton James Public Library in Nebraska City, Nebraska. Both of these library staff entered the course a little bit skeptical about the value of Wikipedia. They would poo-poo it, says Denise, um, and they certainly weren't recommending that students or patrons use Wikipedia as a starting point for their research. After taking, actually during the course, Denise found herself tailoring the materials that we um, assigned them to do when we were having them evaluate articles and using that to redesign her information literacy and research course for high school students. Rather than telling students not to go to Wikipedia to start their research, she had all of them start their research with Wikipedia and compare the article's uh, level of development um, between each other and then use those as jumping off points to start research within the library. For her, she says, I am pushing its value to help students be critical consumers of information. Like Denise and Tom, Layla Andrews at Austin Public Library found herself also really keen and interested in using Wikipedia both for its richness and for its weaknesses to help her patrons and communities be critical. She was very upfront and critical during our course about the limitations of Wikipedia. She says Wikipedia has biases and she in, uh, appreciated that we named them. But uh, Layla, like many other library staff, found herself in a position where she could help others understand those biases and do something about them. So she says, people need librarians to help them gain skills to navigate the digital environments they're going to every day. So this was really pushing back against a long, um, kind of longer history of library staff as well as um, educators in their communities who were telling students and, and patrons not to use Wikipedia at all. Many of our library staff do programs uh, for their communities, and including developing community partnerships. Kim Gile from Kansas City Public Library is one such institutional connector. Kansas City has a rich jazz history. It is really a heartland um, for jazz over time, and Kim immediately saw that there were many areas that needed further development on Wikipedia to cover Kansas City's rich history. So she got to work right away developing partnerships with the American Jazz Museum in Kansas City, as well as the Kansas City Jazz Orchestra, which is a really active community of um, musicians in, the, uh, in Kansas City who are both interested in their own um, history and in playing jazz music. And just last Monday, she held a really amazing event it, at the American Jazz Museum that included live jazz jamming, uh, Wikipedia education and tutorials, and then learning how to improve articles, uh, specifically biographies of jazz musicians connected to Kansas City. For Kim, Wikipedia became this tremendous opportunity, she said, to bring together institutions to develop out and be, uh, be sharing out what's relevant to their communities and making it a robust resource for everyone. I dare you not to get excited, she says. Many of our library staff were also from small and rural libraries. So 80% actually of US public libraries are smaller rural. And Karen Cast is one such library staff. Her, her library in Eagle Mountain City Public Library in Utah has about 12 full-time or part-time staff members. But Karen took, uh, took from the course just this drive to share what she was learning with all of her staff members and starting small by having them do their own tutorials and learning about Wikipedia so that they could be better informed between each other and when they were helping their patrons. 
Learning what I learned in the course is important for all of our staff. We're a small rural library. We all do a little of everything, and Wikipedia fits into all of our work. All of these stories, I think, um, are showcasing what our project accomplished. But I'd like to step back and, and highlight again at a high level some of what Marilee was saying about what our course design and really explicitly name how, though our project was not specifically about women, what we did do was take what I would call a feminist approach to Wikipedia training. And I just want to name what that means. So first of all, taking a feminist approach means respecting that the participants, and 80% of our participants in the, in the course training self-identified as women, but we really respected that these are unique individuals. They have a diversity of perspectives, they have situated knowledges, and they're not necessarily all the same. But what we did do was aim to facilitate these human-to-human -human connections between newcomers and more seasoned Wikipedians so that they could find alignments and similarities. We wanted to build a supportive, empathetic community. We did not shy away at all from naming Wikipedia's limits, biases, and gaps. But what we did do was give people a way out from dwelling in the negativity and instead identifying these as opportunities to affect meaningful change. Throughout, we featured and championed the existing activist networks that are doing important work to address limits, gaps, and biases. As a, as a feminist approach, we aimed to lift each other up and support each other. And then we really sought to educate the participants so that they could confidently decide for themselves how they would like to engage. Importantly also, we recognized that Wikipedia is a form of labor, and we aimed to enable the library staff to meaningfully incorporate Wikipedia into their paid work. We also just throughout thought to stay positive and be kind to each other. We really accomplished a lot in the last 12 months and there's so much that we could say here, but what I'd like to do is draw your attention to our final report where you can see more of our learnings and more stories from the libraries themselves. And so I put the hyperlink here and I'm happy to share that in chat in just a minute. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and for convening this conversation, and I look forward to talking a little bit uh, more. Thank you, Monica. Uh, super interesting uh, presentation and experience, um, and thank you so much for preparing that and, and sharing it with us today. Um, I would like to give the floor to Nicole uh, Saad, who is, um, our, who is my co-host today uh, for this event. So we can start with a few questions and then we can chime in with questions from uh, people. Uh, if you're here in the, in the Blue Jeans or if you're watching through YouTube, you can drop uh, the question on the chat as well. Thank you, Maria. Uh, first, I just wanna say thank you to everyone for sharing. Uh, what you're doing is really exciting and I think it sets a great example for uh, the impact that women program leaders can have in the movement. So the first question I want to ask to everyone is, in your personal journey as a Wikimedian, have you ever encountered any boundaries or obstacles? Um. Shall I call on someone <laughs> to go first? Lucina, do you want to take it? Yes, yes. Yes, we find a lot of boundaries during activities, not only on-site activities, also when we make, for example, these virtual courses that I just explained. Um, for example, improving when we propose uh, participants to improve uh, gender gap content or to create women's biographies or creating articles about uh, feminist concepts, about the theory of feminist, of feminist of feminism, we found boundaries and also we have to organize different guides about how to work with uh, improving gender perspective in Wikipedia and um, when we make editatons or when we are all helping or tracking 
uh, in a virtual way participants. So the boundaries are more in in when we are editing in Wikipedia, for example, not in Wikimedia uh, community, but when we are in Wikipedia, we publish something about I don't know, for example, economic uh, feminist theory. We find that we need to make a double effort to uh, maintain that information. For example, having more sources that we have to maintain it because uh, if you know that there, that there is different persons all the time looking what you are adding if, if it's related with femi feminism or gender gap. So yes, we found boundaries. Uh, I can speak as well. I can say that um, is similar similar to the Argentinian case, I, um, but slightly different. Is that in our course and program, in order to to really meet the needs of the public library staff who are learning on you know during their busy jobs and so on and so forth, we didn't take them into areas of Wikipedia where many decision making happens. So we weren't having them look at articles for deletion. We weren't having them look at notability notice boards. And if there was a need to to uh, support someone's edit, this was something that our team internally uh, absorbed, that, that work of absorbing. Um, and one of my personal fears, and I don't know if I can speak for the team here, but personally, I worry that uh, uh, the ability to bring more voices in and affect change needs to go beyond adding content, and it needs to be um, the ability to change the kind of digital infrastructure of, of Wikipedia's decision-making processes, and that means getting involved in these other areas where decision-making happens. But I'm optimistic because this is the beginning of, of many newcomers who are um, very keen and interested and not afraid of, of that kind of um, they're, they're used to kind of dealing with a wide range of, of people, public library stuff, you know, they meet all kinds of people every day and so I also think that as they, as more public library stuff are, are joining and finding their way in Wikipedia that they may um, be, be changing the ways that these administrative practices work, but that wasn't something that we were able to directly address in this program. Uh, just a comment before the next question. I really like how you brought up measuring impact beyond the edit count, because I think that's something that programs do really, really well. Um, we could probably be, we could probably be better at measuring and sharing that impact, um, but in program spaces like education and libraries, there's such a huge amount of impact um, beyond just what happens on Wiki, which is still really significant, but I really like that you brought that up. Um, and with that, I'll pass it to Maria for the next question. Thank you. Um, the next question is about the gender gap. So uh, when you introduce Wikipedia to um, through a program to newcomers, um, do you address the gender gap? Do you do you mention it? Uh, how do you describe it, and what um, what responses do you hear from participants? And I also wanted to um, remind everyone who is in the call, uh, if you if you have a, a, an answer to this, I would love to to hear it as well, and to any other questions. I'd I'd be happy to answer. This is merely in our in our course, uh, we definitely specifically named and identified uh, the gender gap, and as Monica said, we really aim we. Uh, highlighted this not only as, as a problem for Wikipedia and for the world that consumes Wikipedia, but also as an opportunity um, for librarians. We highlighted the gender gap, I should say, along with other other gaps that are uh, present in Wikipedia. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a broader than um, gender gap issue, I, I would say. Um, and, and in my own personal experience, uh, I've, I've highlighted the gender gap to people, and I find that people know about the gender gap. There's been so much um, press about it. In fact, I've had people ask me if it's okay to have an edit-a-thon that's not about the gender gap. Um, so I think that 
you know, highlighting that, that there are many opportunities in, in Wikipedia, that this is, this is just one. But it does seem to be something that really excites people, that they can see an opportunity to really um, improve things and, and make a difference and to move that number. Um, so I think that it, it really provides an excellent um, example and challenge uh, to people. So thanks to Rosie and others for continuing to lift that up for us. Uh, yes, in Wikimedia Education, in Wikimedia Argentina Education Program, we also address it in every activity we we proposed. Um, we said all the time in our uh, trainings that Wikipedia is a reflection of our society, is a reflection of our context, social context, and all the debates that we find in Wikipedia are debates that are present that are present in or are current debates in our society. For example, three weeks ago we have a lot of debates in Wikipedia uh, related with the abortion law in Argentina. The article of misoprostol and, abor and abortion was, were articles that were really in mo moving on. So in our education program uh, we have al always talked about this and also we think that it's important not only to address the idea of a gender gap in content in Wikipedia. <clears throat> it's also important to, to address the gender gap between women and men editing in Wikipedia. And that's, I think, that is really important because uh, not all the persons that we work in the education program know about that. So I think that it's that we are all the time thinking the gender gap and how to communicate uh, through different channels. Uh, I think, uh, Luisina, you just mentioned something uh, that takes us to another question that we had uh, regarding the gender gap. Um, uh, Nicole, would you, would you like to ask that question or uh, regarding uh, men? Go ahead. It's, it's the question, the question regarding um, bringing men into the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, as you know, like, when we, when we talk about women's empowerment, you can't really have women's empowerment without engaging men in the conversation and um, having them be a part of the conversation. So our question is, how do you engage men in understanding the gender gap and collaborating to improve gender equality in the Wikimedia movement? If I may, I'd like to um, comment on that one. Uh, Women in Red was the idea of a man, Roger Bamkin from the UK, and he invited me to um, to work on this journey with him. And and uh, all along, therefore, um, men have been our not just our allies, our equal partners. Um, as the editors of um, women's biographies, women's works, and women's issues broadly construed. What we find sometimes is that the male voices um, in our offline um, communication channel just sound different than women's voices in, in how they see things and how they portray things. And sometimes we really need to um, work hard to to kind of sort out some issues, but I can tell you we wouldn't be today where we are in terms of um, percentages without um, the help of those men, and it's um, it's sometimes it feels like work to kind of get us all thinking, sorry for all that buzzing in the background, but without them, um, we it would be a much harder uh, climb. Thanks, Rosie. Does uh, anyone else have something they'd like to add? Yes. In, in Wikimedia Argentina, something that it's important to, to point is that um, all our activities, all our editatons, even those, the, the ones that are uh, related with gender gap, are open editatons. Men and women can participate in this, in the same way. Obviously, we have more women participating in 
topics related with gender gap, but we have men also participate. And also, I have to say that in some cases, uh, we really need the help of, for example, male, male users that help with us to create a more democratic Wikipedia, because we need to be all of us together in Wikipedia creating information and and improving the information related with women, but also with men and with humanity in, in general. But uh, something that we we really want to say is that we open all all, all our all activities that we made and we designed, and we think always with men and women doing the same in the same place and creating safe contexts to work together. I can just say again that for, as Marilee said, while our project wasn't explicitly focused on um, meeting the needs of women, and so both men and women participated in our program, what we aimed to do, ideally, and, and, and it's hard, so it's a, it's a work in progress, is to really take a kind of intersectional feminist approach to the project design and to having that be a part of the project outcome. And that means really situating who men and women are and taking other identities into consideration in terms of how they're going to engage with Wikipedia, um, and then also for what change w looks like on within Wikipedia as well. And so that's really kind of, you need to disrupt this, this binary of, of only being men and women, or complicate it a little bit uh, to, I think, achieve that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I have a question. I have a lot of questions, but since we only have a few minutes and lots of people probably have questions, I'm going to just focus on one. See who you are. Oh, I'm Alex again. I work on the community resources team. Um, one thing that um, I found very compelling about the OCLC project was how much support, how much. Um, very structured support and human-human to con connection there was. And I'm wondering um, how this goes on in the future for them. I know that the grant is over and the project um, the training is over, but what systems or process have you set up so that those librarians continue to have a good connection and support system for each other? So I can I can talk about this some, and maybe Monica has some to add. Uh, boy, Alex, we have talked about this so much um, because we've really we feel like these are our, our ducklings, and we've launched them into the world. We've given them this positive start, and we want to make sure that they continue that. Um, you know, we've looked at existing structures that are out there, um, so we have already pointed them to to Tea House, for example. Um, we hope that they will continue to see themselves as a cohort and use the connections that they've made with one another and also their guides and leverage those going forward. There's a Wikipedia and Libraries Facebook group. I know not everybody's on Facebook, but for those people, you know, it's, it's called Wikipedia and Libraries, so I think it speaks to that. It's a space for libraries. And then there's a new user group, um, the Wikimedia and Libraries user group. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a space where people who both care about supporting libraries who are already active in the movement and also our new Wikipedians can, um, can, can come to, uh, come, come together. But, you know, we, um, we want to be able to kind of extend that, that supportive environment, but also are cognizant of, you know, all, all good things, all grants must come to an end. So, um, yeah. So it's been on our minds as well. Yeah, and I just wanted to jump in and say the Wigan Media Foundation portion of the grant did finish, but the grant project is actually not over until May 31st. So we have continued to provide a lot of support, email support, I've run office hours, and then twice we've had we, uh, kind of webinars called We Wikipedia Better Together. That's ongoing webinars for the course participants on citations and then also on um, programming and events where we talked about how to use the dashboard and we ran an additional webinar in conjunction with the One Lib One Ref that had 500 participants who enrolled in that. And so I think we're, and we will be at PLA, the Public Library Association event, talking about Wikipedia and hosting a meetup for the library staff who participated and their friends. So I'm, I'm liking to see that this is kind of the ball is starting to roll or is picking up speed and that people will within their own network continue to talk 
Um, Kim, Kim Guile, who I mentioned in my presentation, I had the luck and delight of being able to, to go to Kansas City and support her Wikipedia Jazz Edit-a-thon. And she's planning to make a presentation at her state library meeting about Wikipedia, and five or six of her staff participated in the event and were very interested in talking about Wikipedia. So there's there's kind of the ball is rolling, and we aim, you know, we'd love to be able to support everybody, but we're also believing that they are going to support each other as well. I should also mention that the um, Wikicon uh, North America is coming up. It's yeah. in Ohio. It's hosted by the Ohio State Libraries. So we hope that um, our our people in our cohort will will go there and continue with that human human connection. Actually, get to meet people in in real life. So um, so kind of continuing those to to build those connections as we can. Yeah. Um, cool. I think. Do you have another question? I have, I have lots of questions, but there's lots of people. So. <laughs> Does anyone have a question uh, here from the Blue Jeans uh, meeting that would like to speak up? We have two more minutes. Okay. 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 <laughs> um, this one is for Lou. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your Lucina. name. Lucina. Lucina. Um, I was really interested in the Wiki Bridges. Um, Mook, Mook, I don't know how to say that. Um, but, um, and how you were saying that um, there were so many more women participants. And it, do you, is that just a factor that there are just more women teachers? Although my understanding that there was more women teachers in primary education and maybe it's more equal in university settings. But um, I'm just wondering how do people find out about that online course and how are you targeting participation that there's so much so many more women teachers participating. Yes, the MOOC, uh, WikiBridges MOOC. Um, we have, a, we think that we have a lot of women uh, participating because we have more women, in, there are more women in primary and in high school and this MOOC, uh, it's more um, popular in high school level. Uh, but even though that, um, we have men participating, but I think that the subject, the teachers that teach a specific subject, like for example, history or literature, uh, I don't know, uh, social science, are in high school more women, and men, for example, teach more related to math, physics, chemistry, I don't know, that, that are like male subjects. But it's something that we want to also discuss, but it's like 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 that in in general in high school. So we have more participation for teachers that are women teachers and not not so many men. And and also it, I think that we we track that inf this information with surveys surveys that we made at the end of the mock, and we also uh, ask. Men, why they like to to why they think that it's important to make this virtual course, and they um, answer that they th think that Wikipedia is a tool that they have to learn how to use it to explain it in their subjects. And women, for example, answer that Wikipedia gave gave them power to uh, teach in their school. So I think that is a, diffi a different. Um, reading of why they use Wikipedia in school. And that is something that we all the time uh, find in the devolutions that teachers made after the virtual course. And also after the on-site trainings, it's the same in that way. But we have more um, devolutions because we have more teachers doing the virtual course than making the on-site training. Thank you, uh, Lucina, for sharing that. Uh, there is a question going on in the chat about expanding the reach of OCLC. I think uh, for Wikibridges, that was a question uh, at some point, at least. Uh, how, how do we expand or replicate Wikibridges in other countries? Um, uh, hi, Joe. Yeah. We're, we're just about to finish. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I hope... I can. Uh, Oh yeah. Can I jump in for a second, Maria? Yes. Um, I, I think there's a conversation in the chat that's going on about um, expanding, and I think it might be 
kind of a long conversation to do and we're already over time, but I, I did want to bring up um, kind of a last question that was asked a bit ago that we didn't get to just about sharing um, and making available this information. So the question is, will the slide decks be available on Commons and um, is it okay for people to, to share the information that's on there? Yes, Luciana, and uh, <laughs> and Monica, Marilee? Yeah, you know, yeah. the photos of the library stuff, I don't, we had permission to use them for presentations like this, but I would need to double check to, to confirm about the fo their personal portraits specifically to share on Commons. But I did see the question about the, the feminist approach, and I would be happy to have that shared on Commons, and I can upload that individually if we don't uh, to have that more immediate. So thanks for your interest in that, and I definitely hope to see others using a similar feminist, intersectional feminist would be even better, approach <laughs> to programming. Uh, Amazing. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we look forward to seeing the content on Wikimedia Commons, and I hope this was a platform uh, that allowed you to express uh, and to share what the amazing work that you are doing in the movement. So thank you so much for taking the time to make such meaningful contributions, uh, Lucina, Marily, and Monica. And um, yeah, um, have a happy March if you're going to a March today, and uh, we'll see you online. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Thank you very much.